having regular conferences with the involvement of Russia, Sakoma Group, St. Petersburg is uh, uh, having the most active participants of Sarcoma Group. I hope the session will be mutually beneficial. Thank you. Now let's start our session. I have a request to the speakers. Please observe the schedule. We're going to have very tight schedule. So will you allow me to give the floor to Mr. Zinov, the role of multidisciplinary treatment, diagnostics and treatment of uh, uh, bone and soft tissue tumors. Dear colleagues, it's a pleasure to see the same faces for the fifth time with the addition of new participants from abroad. It's impressive. Thank you for coming. Will you allow me to introduce a presentation? We need a presentation. Have a difficulty with uh, slides. So I'll be talking about the role of MDT in diagnostics and treatment of bone and soft tissue tumors. A multidisciplinary team plays a major role in diagnostics and treatment of this pathology. Surgeons, chemotherapists, radiotherapists, pathologists, radiologists. So we are uh, looking at the results of basic research. It's a fact, nothing new. Why is MDT needed when we talk about soft tissues? <laughs> One percent of all tumors has 125 subtypes, according to recent classification, as is the case with bone tissue. It's quite a rare pathology, but still it is very diverse. There's, we, sometimes we have errors in diagnostics and treatment of this pathology. Here in Russia, in developed countries, uh, our uh, colleagues from Scandinavia, Sarcoma Group, uh, and uh, Europe and England uh, uh, are telling the same. There are a lot of errors because uh, here uh, we need infrastructure, a team of specialists, and it is critical in this case because professionals have to take the initiative. Even having an infrastructure, we cannot use what's available without MDT. Diagnostics of uh, bone and tissue uh, in our center has several steps. It's uh, cons telemedical consultation or face-to-face uh, -face consultation biopsy group, tumor board, and then a routing uh, and a support um, for patients uh, uh, is important, but we also look at the experience of our colleagues in Europe and Asia uh, when um, for example, a, a patient is sent to a reference group, and uh, when there is a biopsy available, we get together on a weekly basis. There are morphologists, one clinicist, and radiotherapy uh, uh, doctor, and uh, the conditions or the terms are submitting uh, an anesthetic data, uh, data on radio diagnostics, and, and uh, uh, feedback with uh, the patient. After diagnosing, 
a patient within this primary consultation, we make a decision about repeating biopsy or discussing uh, it in a team. There are cases when we change diagnosis. This is a young patient with big tumor in iliac zone. And according to biopsy, we, so we couldn't exclude several options. It could have be uh, some uh, sarcoma, a bone sarcoma, uh, but uh, radiological signs such as uh, uh, Marcus, uh, the used by a pathologist, couldn't exclude osteogenic sarcoma. That's why we decided to perform secondary biopsy, uh, took uh, an area which uh, was uh, a region of interest for biopsy, uh, and uh, found a lesion. And after certain cycles of staining by morphologists, uh, uh, so it happened to be fibroblastic osteogenic sarcoma, and we changed the tactics of treatment. The same with soft tissue tumors. Uh, when we look at different uh, uh, areas of adipose tissue, uh, we see different uh, uh, parts that can be saturated with lipocytes or lipoblasts, uh, and diagnose can be changed. Uh, of course, we have problems uh, within primary consultation uh, with reference to medications, uh, histoscans uh, might solve uh, the, uh, a lot of issues, according to our government, but it's not the case. Morphologists uh, uh, very often submit uh, the material which needs uh, review, uh, some restaining it, uh, delays the time of diagnostics. Uh, so. But unfortunately, it's difficult to distinguish uh, between different structures. So we are still working at it. And uh, we wish our regions cooperated with us. And um, having made a diagnosis, we start uh, uh, a concilium tumor board. There is minimum two surgeons there. Chemotherapists, uh, radiologists, pathologists, uh, uh, medical nurse uh, administration uh, as administrator she in she's in charge of patients from the beginning to the end controlling uh, the movement uh, within the units and here we take a decision on MDT or on tumor bo uh, board we know that uh, treating soft tissue uh, sarcoma there are a lot of nuances when it's not the first line of therapy, not the first surgery, standards uh, is on the background. So we have to work individually with each patient, and this tumor board helps to take individual decisions. Where are the advantages? Of course, this is a derived uh, practice. It started in England. Uh, but the uh, number of participants or the participants might be changed. We can involve vascular surgeons, for example, or palliative uh, specialists uh, if it is necessary. And logistics of patients is an advantage because when it's a primary consultation for a uh, patient, when he meets a surgeon, it's not only a surgeon's consultation when he is sent for the review of the material and radiological uh, imaging methods, but he is automatically uh, well appointed for uh, the tumor board. At the second visit, he receives enough information about further plans. And it's not only our data. This is the data of international research. We have an improvement in overall survival rate when we make decisions within this MDT and tumor board. And there are obligations with regard to the reduction of cost of treatment. Uh, here is an example with melanoma. Uh, we can save about $1.5,000 per one patient. Uh, we have a bit different uh, costs, but still cost saving is a p very strong factor. Then 
Uh, awareness of the treating doctor is important. Uh, doctor has all the information. Patient knows uh, the future. He knows what to do in the future. This is a great advantage. And uh, educating all participants of MDT is essential. Even mature surgeons have to learn from pathologists the same way as chemotherapists learn from pathologists and surgeons or radiologists who understand each other better speaking common language, which is efficacious. It improves quality of work. Probably it's the most important factor in MDT. The same way radiologists having a lot of radiological imaging methods cannot uh, evaluate the whole picture unless they cooperate with surgeons and other uh, specialists. And of course, our, uh, and uh, the same concerns our morphologists uh, who solve these issues. Uh, and it's a complicated task if there is no cooperation with clinicists. And it's the 21st century, and telemedicine starts working, bringing its fruits. Patients receive adequate assistance and consultations. There are personal contacts maintained. We're always happy to assist and cooperate with other institutions. Thank you so much. See you next year, I hope. Thank you very much. Questions? No mic. Ah, the question was about MDT, whether they, they exist in Russia. Again, no mic is being used. It cannot be translated, unfortunately. У нас очень хорошие хирурги, которые всегда понимают наши трудности в морфологии. Sometimes we cannot make a diagnosis basing on the first biopsy, saying that there must be secondary open biopsy. We always find understanding. And thank you so much for your excellent presentation. I also have a question. You mentioned algorithm of action, of diagnosis and clinicists. I'd like to know, how do you plan it for a week? All patients who come to the polyclinic, it's uh, well impossible uh, that all of them could uh, well, visit this board. How many board meetings do you have per week? We have two stages, biopsy group, which is uh, which takes place in the middle and a multidisciplinary session, board session, the end of the week. Of course, not all patients and can visit. According to foreign practice, uh, we uh, will consider only complicated cases uh, which need urgent uh, um, resolution. And each time we expand the number of patients and. Uh, uh, well, ideally, would like to well cover all patients. For example, bone pathology uh, goes through biopsy group. Well, it takes a lot of time uh, of surgeon uh, who have to be present, and not uh, sometimes it's difficult to understand everything. But we are taking pains. I would like to thank morphologists. It's time consuming, but it's really worth it. And how many days from the time of biopsy or puncture do you receive answer? For example, bone sarcoma. It depends on the material that we obtain as, and from the technological. If it is, uh, if it is a bone uh, tumor, so we need uh, confirmation. Sometimes it takes a week. Elena Alexandrovna. No mic. Uh, well, uh, the, the 
well, some, we, sometimes we need additional radiological images, more information from the patient. Yes, the most important thing is morphology. All board meetings start from that. How many days uh, do you, in, uh, for example, in Italy and Korea, uh, so they receive morphological answer. In how many days from biopsy? How many days is, are needed from the time of biopsy? That is really the important question. Actually, in a soft tissue biopsy, if you did a, just a today morning, we can get the, the afternoon biopsy slide. So within a day, we had the, the biopsies, only biopsy, small biopsy, not the bone tissue, only small soft tissue biopsy, we can make that within a day. Yes. And then I had the one question on the tumor board. Actually, I'm the Dr. Park from Seoul, Korea, and then I'm a pathologist, not the orthopedic surgeon. In your country, when you did the tumor board, who is in charge of the tumor board? Orthopedic surgeon or radiologist or pathologist or oncologist? Позвольте ответить по-русски, чтобы мне надо было дважды было переводить. В данном случае, когда у нас проводится мультидисциплинарная Yes, when we have multidisciplinary session, the responsible person is coordinator. And coordinator uh, so uh, brings everyone together. And then there is conclusion. So we don't have a coordinator or chairman who would undertake that legal burden. So it is within the board. Uh, How many days, uh, uh, if it is osteosarcoma after biopsy of bone tumors, how many days are needed to receive the answer? Okay. In the, the typical the osteosarcoma in the radiologist and also pedic surgeon already know that the, the patient is also pedic osteosarcoma and in the occasion the biopsy and the, we got it and then only the half day of the, the calcification and the, the next two days the working day is necessary to make the diagnosis of the usual case of osteosarcoma and then it is all the same and then in any, any other countries the orthopedic, the, the osteosarcoma, and then we did the neo adjuvant chemotherapy and then the following the procedure. In Italy, it's something different because uh, we have uh, about one week for processing of the material in bone uh, biopsy. And if we need the molecular biology, at least two weeks, two weeks to rule out, for example, Ewing sarcoma, Engine. yeah, with <coughs> molecular biology. Okay. Thank you.